Mr. Rubens, please let me be very clear. Are you declining to answer the questions that this committee puts forth solely on the grounds that you believe that the answer will incriminate you? Sir, I've been advised by counsel not to answer any questions that might incriminate me. Upon advice of counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Diana Rubens and Kimberly Graves, two high-ranking officials at the Department of Veterans Affairs, refusing to testify before the House Veterans Affairs Committee earlier this month. Both women questioned on allegations that they manipulated some numbers within the agency for their own gain. Turns out, though, that's just the beginning. According to a recently released report, the Department of Veterans Affairs paid more than $142 million in bonuses to executives and to employees for their performance in 2014. Here's a problem. Those bonuses were paid even though scandals over veterans' health care and other issues continued within the agency. For more, let's welcome in our panel. Joining us via Skype from Washington, Amber Smith. She's the senior military advisor for Concerned Veterans for America, and she's an Iraq and Afghanistan Army veteran. And also joining us now from Newsmax, Washington, Bill Theobald. He's a correspondent for USA Today and co-wrote the story on the VA bonus scandal. We welcome you both, and Amber, first to you. Veterans died waiting for health care at VA hospitals, and many within the, the VA bureaucracy actually got rewarded. Doesn't rewarding failure only breed more of this kind of failure and ineffectiveness? And what kind of message does this send our veterans? Absolutely. What we're seeing from the story is this is the Department of Veterans Affairs continually rewarding bad behavior, bad employees, and bad executives. If you're going to have a bonus system at all, it should be used to incentivize exceptional work, exceptional results. And so I think that this is just another message sent to veterans that says, look, we're here to take care of our own, our employees who are not serving um, the veterans. And obviously I'm speaking about the bad employees who are doing unethical or who are leading um, from behind and they're not necessarily running the VA, their individual programs as they should be. Um, what, is, what does that say to veterans? It says that you're not our priority number one. The VA comes before the veteran. Uh, Bill, Jeff Miller, my old colleague in the House, now the chairman of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs, spearheaded a measure last year that would have eliminated bonuses for VA senior executives, but it failed. The VA still allowed to hand out these bonuses to executives, managers, and employees. Did this allow the VA to basically reward those who were failing to serve veterans? Well, I think it, you know, it didn't included in the groups of people that received those uh, awards were people that I'm sure did outstanding work, but it's the ones that are, and many of whom are the are the are uh, in the leadership positions, the ones that were associated with some, some of the problems at various locations, I think that would be the most galling to members of Congress, to the public, to veterans in particular. Amber, some have suggested that veteran care be completely privatized, or at least that veterans have that option. But obviously, there's another concern that private insurance companies come at this with a, with a different perspective. Do you share concerns about privatization? Well, I think that the concern is valid. Uh, the VA is notorious for not paying, um, you know, doctors on time that are out in the private sector. Uh, and basically they're having to pay at these lower rates from the medical facilities that are accepting the patients. Um, they're getting paid less, and often they're not getting paid on time. And, it, and in order to get paid, so, sometimes it's, you know, months late, and it's such a red tape paperwork fiasco that it's not worth it to them. That's why you're probably seeing some people not wanting to take on um, VA paid patients. Uh, so... So I think it's unfortunate that that is the reputation that the VA has, and that's one more thing that they need to straighten out so that veterans can get the best medical care that they deserve and that they've earned. And unfortunately, that's not what they're getting right now. Um, but veterans do need to be provided with that choice. They do need to be able um, <clears throat> to have it where it's set up where they can, if they're not getting the best um, and most timely care from their VA facility and whatever 
region of America that they might be, that they have the option uh, to seek out a local doctor that is within um, a reasonable uh, radius for them to seek out that best care. Uh, now, yesterday, during Veterans Day observances, President Obama described improvements at the VA since last year's scandal. Let's take a look at what the president said. We've made historic investments to boost the VA budget, expand benefits, offer more mental health care and improved care for our wounded warriors, especially those with post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. We've now slashed the disability claims backlog by nearly 90%. We're reducing the outrage of veterans' homelessness and have helped tens of thousands of our veterans get off the streets. Uh, your reaction, Bill, uh, about 15 seconds. We'll try to divvy up the final 30 seconds, 15 seconds between you both. Bill, first to you. React to what the president said. Well, I think things probably are better from a 30,000-foot uh, uh, standpoint, but I think that the problem is is that there are so many examples, uh, example after example of of real problems within particular um, locations, and those are still ongoing and new ones coming up every day. Amber, last word to you, ma'am. Uh, the problems at the VA are not a lack of funding, as the VA always likes to cry that it is. It's the second largest federal gov uh, government agency um, in the United States. It has over $160 billion um, <clears throat> in funding. We've seen how they're spending money with over $142 million in these bonuses last year to many uh, departments that are failing veterans. And so this isn't a money issue. This is a uh, management and a lack of accountability issue. Amber Smith and Bill Theobald, we thank you very much for your time and your comments. We're coming back.